Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we are extremely grateful, privileged, and honored to be in your presence once again. So God, do let the words that will come from my mouth, the very motives and meditations of my heart, be acceptable unto you, God, for you are my strength and my redeemer. Lord, we are so grateful again for this privilege, God, of impartation. God, that you would speak mightily through your servant here today. God, feed me on my feet. Give me clarity, understanding of your word so that lives are touched, challenged, and changed and never the same. God, we are positioning ourselves to prioritize and to rearrange some things in our life that may not, God, be conducive to the development that you purpose us to. And so, God, as we move into this new year, as we continue to embark on what you have in store, I pray that you would speak to us daily, consistently, and regularly so that we'll continue to walk with you in the way that you know is your will for our life. And so, God, I'm so grateful and thankful today for your word this morning. Why? Because it's your word that makes us new, your word that teaches us about you. So make it clear and make it plain. In Jesus' name, we just shout amen. amen. Give it up for Jesus right there, right there, everybody. Amen, amen. And I was just thinking, I said, uh, if you come to the, um, the uh, Valentine's Day thing, don't judge me on my moves. I lost them all. I lost them all when I got saved. So that's why it got to be a real good time. Just a simple moment. And so I'm looking forward to just fellowshipping. This year, I've been really adamant. Uh, you're going to see a whole lot of fellowships. Uh, we have about five moments every week that the word of the Lord is shared with you all as believers here in this ministry. I mean, from the Rock Roundup, you got to get in there in the morning. Some exclusive things will be shared. I mean, Wednesday night, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, five days, five times out of your seven days in a week, um, there is divine impartation in your life. And so our goal now is to implement, y'all see, based upon our priorities, is to implement even more fellowship in the church. I mean, we, we ain't in a pandemic. We're planning uh, every day about how we're going to just go back. I got this shirt that God gave me, say, um, um, normal, uh, normal may not ever come back, but Jesus will. Um, amen. Y'all will see that later. Hey, amen. Y'all know what time it is. Let me see them what? All right. <laughs> yeah. I would mess with you, Eric. I know you say, okay, I get it. To my nail, you never said, there you go with your power token cell. If you ain't got one, the earth has got one for you right there. The earth has got to cover, got to cover. Bless you all, bless you all. Thank you for your time today uh, as we're talking about time. And so I want to continue um, throughout this first quarter of the year uh, where I believe God has us. And before I do that, would y'all just give it up for our amazing ushers, ushers in training. Uh, all the congregation of care, all the people around the walls, man. I mean, so many of you all, I mean, just faithfully um, serving. Uh, uh, but, but Lucy, we got, that, we got that congregation of care deep, man. Uh, they in there hard. We had a whole bunch of them c come in, but we got like 19, 20 of them on the crew now. And so um, I'm so grateful for it, man. Fellas ushering, people getting, it was so good to see you over there. Adam, I saw you, man, right there, boy. It's so good to see you, man. I mean, Sal over there, over there on the training side. Well, y'all got... I mean, God be the glory, man. Yeah, we take this, we serial servers. Man, we serve with a heart. I thank y'all every day for risking your lives with me. I mean, every day. We haven't closed this church one, uh, probably just a few weeks since the pandemic. Like, been back. And God has just covered you all and covered us. And I'm grateful. And I, I have to share that publicly. And so as we talk about this year, this way we're going, on, on, on New Year's Eve, I shared with you the direction for the year. But as we break this thing down in quarters, I want you to receive what God has laid on my heart to share as it relates to prioritizing, practicing, and perfecting. And so we're talking about our priorities of 2022. Somebody shout, I'm prioritizing in 2022. Amen. And so uh, we, don't, we have no fancy slogans. I can say the best you in 22. I can do all that stuff. But I want to make sure your life is prioritized in a way where God is first. Um, I'm only establishing right now um, the greatest of all times. God over all things. God in the front. God is not just a number. He is priority. And so uh, as we're talking about this, we emphasize in these things 
during this time. And so what we're talking about specifically is prioritizing. Somebody shout prioritizing. And so that's the overarching part of this first segment of this series is how do we prioritize? I share this all the time that everything I allow in my life is important. I got a lot of things to do. I got this, I got that, I got ministry, I got family, I got friends, I got businesses. I mean, things are happening all the time. I mean, uh, renting out properties and things of this nature. I just, we just rented out some new property. I mean, we got over 30,000 square foot of property rented out. And, and, and managing people and things that we say are important, right? But the thing of this is, is that we have to learn that yes, things are important, but we got to know without a doubt what is priority in our life. We got to know that because when God is in our priority, everything that we may be pursuing would not lead us to purpose. If God isn't. I tell you all the time that many believers seek the kingdom of God backwards. They go get these things and say, God, is this what I'm supposed to have? God said, you should have stopped by me first. And I would have told you that that thing that you thought was a blessing is now a burden to you. I would have told you to hold off on that right then. And so I want to encourage you as you're moving forward in God's purpose in your life that you really consider some things. And so what I'm emphasizing in this season is time management. Somebody shout time management. So this is part number two of time management. And so as we're going into time management, how to manage our time properly. And so as I was sharing this, because these are not only lessons that I have been practicing I'm in the stage, in this current stage of perfecting some of these things as I come back to the ministry to start showing how these priorities can lead to perfection in your life. Like literally, I'm, 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 I'm every day, I mean over the last several months, been really learning how to prioritize my life. I told y'all, man, for years, I could tell you probably slept three hours in several years a night because I was trying to do everything at the same time and make this happen, make that happen, do this, do that, run over here. And God said, you got to learn how to prioritize. And since I've learned how to prioritize my life, I find myself more at peace. Man, I, I, I go to bed on time. Jesus Christ, somebody, that's a blessing all by itself. I ain't no sleep felt so good. How many no sleep good? I was in a bed last night like 8 o'clock. I look at the car like, hey, I'm just sitting here watching TV. I look at my eye like, this is unusual for me. I mean, weekdays, I'm in one o'clock and I'm up at three again. Four, I said, God, I'm not to, I said, okay, that can wait. Jesus. And I found out that it could. It was still nothing I could have do about it because God is first. God is going before us, handling stuff that we can't handle giving answers that we've been praying and staying up all night for. And so I want to teach you better how to manage your time because this is what I'm sharing. Why, this is why I'm sharing my personal testimony. Now, you'll hear that throughout this because to know something is to do something, right? But to understand something is to teach it. So if I know something, I can do it. But when I understand it, I can now teach it to you. Because sometimes parents, people, or even on your job, you may know something, but that's all you know. You can't show nobody until you gain understanding of it. Now you can teach your children. You can teach others. You can go out from this place and say, you know what? I don't have to do everything all the time because I've learned how to manage my time. And so the first scripture that we laid from the foundation of this series is in Ephesians chapter 5, verses number 15 through 17. We just want to do a quick recap so that this can be in your spirit, so you'll know that this is where we are. In chapter 15, chapter 5 of, verse, uh, chapter five of Ephesians, verses 15 through 17, it says it here real quickly. It says, be very careful. Somebody shout, be very careful. It don't say just be careful uh, in, in a little bit. It says, be very careful then how you live. And we established from the beginning that how I live has everything to do with my time. It says, not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are 
evil. My Jesus. <coughs> Reason why is because he said, therefore, do not be foolish, but under what? Stand. Understanding is that comprehension that you have in your heart that gives you the ability not just to say something, but we're, we're repeated on command and authority in your life. It says, understand what the will or what the Lord's will is. And so that's the direction. That's always our goal is that we got to be in the will of God, being very careful how we spend our time. Be very careful how we live. The reason why these things are synonymous is because when you're out of time, you're no longer living. And we see that the days are evil and they are expiring every single day. The death tolls, the things and all these things that happen around us, I know that even me, I'm telling you, I have to learn to say, God, thank you for every day because every day my feet hit the floor, I want to make sure I'm not wasting moments, but I'm maximizing moments. Amen. And so as we recap from last week, I want to lay that foundation in Ephesians 5 so you can have it in your note because every day I want you to walk carefully, not carelessly. I want you to be wise and not foolish. I can tell you every day, you can tell me all day what you are, but where you spend and how you spend your time will determine whether or not you're wise or foolish or not. And so we want to make better decisions, wiser choices, so that we can get the full result of God's purpose out of our life. And so I want you all to go with me today real quickly to James chapter 4. That's where I want to start at this morning as we navigate through this time management series. Amen? In James chapter 4, James is talking to the people here today. And as we get there, he's dealing with something. He's emphasizing a few things. He's dealing with what great certainties that we have in this life or what shall come to pass. He lets us know vividly that only God knows what's really going to happen tomorrow. In other words, he said only God knows and he calls in us to realize that we really don't know nothing. That we don't have a clue. You can plan all day for tomorrow, but you have no clue about what tomorrow really going to bring. When you lay down and go to sleep, you have no inkling. You have, until your eyes pop open, you don't know whether or not you're still alive or not. And so a lot of times we can make plans, but if our plans does not include God's participation, they may not last or come to pass. And that's what I'm sharing in all these, because we make a lot of plans. We say we're going to do this. We're going to open this. We're going to make this happen. Everything that we do, we have to consult the kingdom before we even pursue these paths that we think may be purpose for us. Now, in James chapter 4, I'm going to go to verse number 13 today. It says it here, just as I read this last week, but I want to emphasize this. It says, now listen, you who say... <coughs> Today or tomorrow, we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. Why? You don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, somebody shout, if it's the Lord's will, it says, we will do this or that. And I, I didn't, my wife was sharing, when we got in the car last Sunday, she said, baby, I heard, you know, people say, if the Lord's will, but this is the first time I actually saw it in the Bible. Y'all, yeah. if you grew up black, you are, that's all you ever heard. But if the Lord say the same, I, 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 if the Lord willing, I see you Sunday, you know. And you always like, why did they say that? You know, and I, I, I mean, and so when she said that, I said, it, it, it's right, it's right there. I said, but that Lord's will has to do with God's ways. And a lot of time when we are saying, we'll put the Lord's will on things that may not be God's way. You know, we'll tell somebody I see at the club, man, the Lord will. You know, even your job may not, it may be just what you want to do. But you got to make sure everything that, and I believe that this is what I believe. This is my personal, and I can tell you because I see God move in so many ways. When I say the Lord's will, my first mentality says, if it's the Lord's way, he's going to bring me to his will. 
if it lines up with his word, it may not read verbatim in the Bible, but it may be, it, it always line up with the word of God because when we line ourselves up with the word of God, it puts us in his will. And when I was reading this, it lets me know a few things, and I was sharing this on last week, about how important it is to set your priorities in order and how you spend your time. And so I want to emphasize real quickly, God, family, and everything else. I need y'all to say that real loud when we say God, God family, family, and everything else. So in this series, we're going to see God, how God, our time with God, how our time with our family, and where does it leave us in time for everything else. I'm telling you, your, your, your everything else will begin to get a little bit smaller, and it won't even matter to you. You'll be saying, man, I wish, I wish. People, I tell people, folks all the time, they, they, they wish they lived in a better city than El Paso. I say, El Paso is so great to me because I got, I, I'm surrounded by, I got, I, I'm, I'm in the God place that I'm supposed to be. I'm where my family. So all the other stuff, really, yeah, I can go to, I can go to uh, uh, Phoenix and Dallas. and I'm from Florida. I can go back there. But then I may be out of God's purpose. Y'all going to get this in a second. So y'all look at Fort Bliss, y'all be like, y'all know Fort Bliss mean bless, right? Y'all know that? Y'all at the blessed place. Bliss mean bless. I know y'all don't see it like that. You're driving out of, driving in the middle of nowhere. You, you oh my God, something here. God, something here. Because you may be trying to get closer to you. <laughs> Amen. I told somebody the first time I got in with, they said, man, I love El Paso. I'm from this city, and it's slow. I said, because sometimes God want to slow you down a little bit. Amen. So he can get your attention. So he can get your mind right. Amen. Y'all so trying to find all the other stuff to do. I ain't got this. ain't got this. ain't got that. I said, but it got God, though. If you get your God life right, get your family life right, everything else will be like, man, I, don't, I, don't, I, can, go do, I can go do stuff. Because my God life right, so God has blessed me in a way. If I want to go do something, I go do it, and I come back. I'll be ready to get back. Anybody be ready to get back to El Paso? I do. I'll be going pray. I'm like, I'm so ready to get back. This, all this, I, I, I'd have been here and saw the, saw the hotels and saw the food and had a couple of adventures for a few days, but don't, don't get me back to my house. Amen. Ain't nothing like sleeping in my own bed. Amen. Ain't nothing like being around my good church family. I got some, some of the best people. Matter of fact, all my friends is here. All the people I really, really, really love is right in this room or somebody connected to me. So I'm telling you these things because I want you to have those things because James deal with those certainties. And so as we continue to discuss this, I want you to not ignore those things that God is really trying to share in your life. And so I want to talk for a few moments about to prioritize God is to move at God's permission. Somebody shout with me, say to prioritize God. I need you to hear this out of your heart is to move at God's permission. So to prioritize God, you have to move at his permission. You cannot move when you choose or want to move. To prioritize God is to move when he says move. And that's why in verse 14, it says here, you don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What your life is or what is your life. You are a mist that appears for a little while. And this is direct reference from Proverbs 27 and 1, where it says, do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. Even though life seems uncertain to us, how many know it's never uncertain to God? Even though it may not seem like we know what's going on or what will happen, that's why I'm sharing these priorities in this moment because the closer we stay with God, the more we'll have at least an inclination that even though we don't know, we're holding on to the one who knows everything about our future. You know, anybody ever had to tell your kids to stay out of your business? You know, it, none of y'all send y'all kids out to go get a job at eight years old to cover the bills, do you not? Why? Because you said that you don't know what's going to happen. Just leave it up to me, and I got it. And sometimes you got to just push people or even your children out of your... God is saying the same thing. Stop worrying about tomorrow. Just stay connected to me, and I will guide you into your next if you allow me to be in your now. 
That's the hardest part of it because a lot of us don't like to be out of control. We like to plan. I know, and, and he didn't say don't plan. He said just don't plan without me participating. Make sure that I'm in those place. So many times we are saying we want to do this. We want to go there. We want to do that. But God said you got to make sure that I'm included. He wants us to not, he wants us to look at how fragile our future is when we move outside of God's permission. James said, I want you to see it. I don't want you to just walk in every day. I, want, I don't want you to just know this. I want you to understand this so that when you can tell others around you that you got to see that your future is fragile when you're not walking in faith with God. That no matter how good you are, no matter how talented you are, no matter how many degrees, you cannot produce anything in your life without God's permission. And if we know it now, and, 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 and do things happen? Do things take, I'm talking about the things that are purpose for your life. He does not discourage us from planning or doing, but never apart from reliance on him. I've learned this the hard way, y'all. You know, because some of us, we got great gifts. You know, we can see things. And then we'll start saying, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And sometimes we can get to that place where we didn't include God in that thing. And all of a sudden it's like, man, I wish I would have. And the enemy wants nothing more for you to live in regret. I can say this week after week after week. Every time you have to redo, you end up wasting time. And the enemy don't have to kill you if he can keep us killing time. If he can keep us doing over, redoing, taking that. Uh, anybody that been to college, you know, and you fail a class, you can't take that class right then. You can't take it till when? Next semester. Then next semester, you got to wait a whole another half a year. And what happened if that class ain't available? You got to wait another whole season of your life. Because you were preoccupied probably with doing everything else except for applying yourself. And that's the way the enemy does. And so many people are even giving up in the process because things that we wasted in time may not be available to retake. Amen. It may not be available for us to redo it when we realize that we wasted time not doing it. I mean, that's the awesome thing about God is that he said, if you trust me, you'll find yourself not doing things over and over and over again because when you ask for wisdom, you'll do it right the first time like you've done it all the time. That's the awesome part about God impartation of wisdom in these moments. And so I want to ask a few questions to us before I depart in this moment. How do we manage our time? Come on, show how. So this is, I didn't say a whole lot of stuff. But the question may be, well, I heard you, Pastor, but how do I? I heard put God first, but what does that look like? Like God first, is that praying? How do we manage our times? But also, why do we need to manage our time? Because those are questions that ponder my mind all the time like God how do I do it and why do I need to do it this is where I need y'all to hear this our priorities are really put under pressure this is when it's pre this is when that pressure comes and everything around us begin to seem like it's the most important thing Any, anybody can tell me this anytime you're trying to get your life straight trying to prioritize your life that's when all kind of other stuff start popping up Amen. Some of y'all made a commitment. When you get your taxes, you're going to pay off your bills. But then when you get that taxes, you're going to find something else to buy. Everything is going to look good. You, opportunity that you didn't even have before. Stuff going to go on sale. Things going to come out. So they're going to drop offers on your email. You're like, no, I've been waiting. Yeah, that must be a sign from God. No, that's an enemy tactic. <laughs> well, it happens every year to some of us. Amen. Don't say that too loud. Every year, you may pray, God, when I get my food, because you know you're going to get a fat. I wish I got a check. I, I, I'll be trying to come out. But some people get a good fat one. And they be like, well, I'm going to pay off this. I'm going to do this. And by middle of March, it's like, man, did I? 
and it wasted away. What I'm saying, how do we and why do we? Because the thing of it is, is that it's a how and a why that I'm answering this question. Because this is where our priorities are put under pressure. Because when, when I got information on how to do something, how not to do it began to sound even louder. Because Paul even said, when I want to do right, what? With the evil days, the evil stuff, begin to kind of come in, be trying to get your attention, take you away from the purposes of God. Would you turn to Psalms 90 real quickly with me? I'm going to read verse 12, Psalms 90 and 12. I want to read this. Man, when I looked at this, though, I had to read this from, like, a whole bunch of translations. I was like, God, you are really talking to me today because this is how I prioritize. This is how I make God important. This text puts us in such harmony with God and it keeps us so consistent with him that once we get this down pat y'all I promise you the perfecting and the practicing will become just like natural and I learned something here y'all that it ain't always common sense and I shared a few series ago about what the word common sense really means it means that I got information stored up that when I have to apply it, I can use it. And I share something about redeeming time is the same as buying time back. Now I was sharing with one of the, I was, I was uh, uh, um, uh, going through uh, a youth training on um, Friday evening, and I had um, three of them prepare a lesson. And so I heard the first one, and um, the, uh, after I heard the first one, I said, okay, I think you're on track. You go forward. One of the youth leaders said, hey, pastor, you know, I prepared, you know, they were just like, you know, prepare. I say, they say, you know, I, I say, well, I, I did all that study. I say, I said, but it, it wasn't wasted. I say, you don't know when you're going to use that. I said, that time you spent with God, you may not get to share it on Sunday. <coughs> But it never was a, she didn't say it was a waste of time, but she was like, Pastor, you know, I, I, what do I do with all this information? I said, one day, all that you receive from that study time, it may not be projected on a Sunday, but I promise you, somebody going to come to you one day. And all that stored up word will come as common knowledge to you. That's why you got to spend time with God because by the time you get to a situation, you'll have common knowledge about how God has already promised to walk with you, talk with you, carry you through to be before you against everything that could come among or against you. And so when I read this, Paul, I mean, um, um, David was sharing with us in this moment. It was a very intimate setting as you got there. Psalm 90, y'all there, verse number 12. It says, teach us to number our days. Jesus Christ, it says that we may gain a heart of wisdom. That's one version. I, I want to read the one from the TPT, the Passion, right? It says, look, look at it. It says, help us to remember that our days are numbered and help us to interpret our lives correctly. Set your wisdom deeply in our hearts so that we may accept your correction. This is how we're going to make God a priority. Listen to this, y'all. Another verse from the New Living Translation says, teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. The Living Bible, another one. I, I, I just had to share all these verses. It says, teach us to number our days, and look at this, and recognize how few they are. Help us to spend them as we should. Somebody shout amen. amen. I want to read all of those because I'm going I'm to mix them all up in a moment. But I looked at it, it says number, all of them are number or remember. Number or remember. Number, remember, and also realize. So God, in, in this moment, 
is sharing something with us to teach us how to number, remember, and realize something. All of this is so important because God is saying that even when you want to play like you don't know, I got a way of bringing this thing back to your memory. Even when you're considering things that are far off, I'm going to bring you back into your now. This is how God has orchestrated our life to keep us in harmony with him, to keep us walking alongside of him every way. This is how we make God priority is that we're taking every day serious. We ain't waiting on another anniversary. We ain't waiting on another birthday. We ain't waiting on another holiday because those come by the year. And that's a lot of time when people really regroup their lives by the time another year passed or another birthday. Now you realize, man, I'm getting older. God said, you got older yesterday. <laughs> he said, you're a day older today. And every day you get older, you should become a day wiser. You shouldn't, even, you shouldn't just turn 40 and all of a sudden, that's when everything starts coming upon you. He said, when I turned 40, I thought when I turned 30, I was something best, boy. I said, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't 20 no more. I got a little bit to say. I realized I still was dumb. I still realized I didn't know nothing. Because I still wanted to do things my way. 40, boy, I, man, I got a little wisdom now. Man, I'm about to be 44 in a few weeks. Boy, Jesus Christ, I'm getting old. Wiser. But the thing of it is, I found out just because you age don't mean you get wiser. Somebody shout amen to that. There's still 50-year-olds making 20-year-old mistakes. 60 year old making 13 year old mistakes. And I discovered that because sometimes you may see old folks in church, but that don't mean that they all know. Amen. You got to make sure they live it well. Amen, Brother Barter. I see you over there, Sister Connie. Amen. Amen. Well, I suppose I, 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 I declare you wise. I'm serious because a lot of times people think because you age, you're taking life more serious. And I'm thinking about this thing because I, I, I got folks that I know. I got, some of us got relatives that still doing the same old stuff. Like, sometimes, this, this, is just, this just be me. Like, when I see old people doing stupid stuff, like, oh, uh, you know, I don't know, like, like people that got grand, like, and I, they be doing, like, crazy, they be on YouTube and doing all kinds of, I'm like, I'm like, you, you should get Jesus. Anybody ever say, like, come on, like, you know. I know you've been around long enough to know Jesus. I'll be saying, I'll be, maybe I'll be saying that to myself. Maybe so I, I say that seriously because I'm like, you ain't got that many days left. <laughs> like, like, you counting backwards now. Y'all go get this. <laughs> I mean, you just say that sometimes. When you say some of your some people you know, you be like, "Come on now." And then I look at those young folks and let them know, "Come on now too," because they're killing y'all off quick. So just like you ain't got no life left. The enemy trying to kill him, money. So I'm t that's, why I'm t that's why God is saying this in his moment. I hope y'all hear my heart on this because I need y'all to hear this. I need you to live each day with an eternal perspective. Like eternity is at hand. Like God is trying to do something in your life eternally. Live your life with eternal perspective. Y'all got that media for me? I need to make sure they got it. I, I, I thought I said, all right, thank you so much. I just don't have to see it to believe it's there. Amen. Live each life with eternal perspective. Living with eternity in mind. This is why I'm sharing this because living with eternity in mind is the wisest way to live. It's the wisest way to live. It makes everything you do count. 
It may every day you live matter. It starts saying, okay, God, I'm not waiting for things to happen. I'm making things happen. And eternal perspective keep us, chase, keep us from chasing empty dreams and material gratification. It'll teach us from chasing the world things and the things that's on our, it'll keep us chasing those, from chasing all those wild and crazy stuff. It'll keep us from wasting our years and pursuing temporal things that we can't take with us anyway. I tell people all the time, man, y'all heard it, you, you never seen an ATM behind a hearse? You can't take that stuff with you. You got to live life every day. God has eternity. He has put eternity in our heart. And knowing that we have to give an account to him one day should motivate us to use every waking moment the right way. Every day I wake up, y'all, I'm telling you, we may all have sin. Not y'all, but all have sin. Everybody has fallen short of the glory of God. But every day I wake up, it says to me that God has given us another opportunity to get it right. And if God is giving us opportunities every day that we wake up to get it right, why not get it right? Why not make those wrong things right? Why not make up for those bad choices that you did yesterday? God said, I'm giving you another day. Great is my faithfulness. My mercies are new every morning. And sometimes we'll wake up the day and you're still mad at folks. Wasted time. That's why he said, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. And we'll make a, and some of y'all like to be mad for weeks. Wasting your time. Wasting moments. And then something happened. You see on the news, people always sit up on the news. When something happened, they say, I wish I had a chance to say I was sorry. And you watch that. And we'll see stuff like that. We'll watch people regret not loving those around them and spending time or making things happen and all of a sudden they're telling a, a moment in life and we get a chance to see it and some folks will walk away from that experience and say, well, I still got time left. I'm still going to hold that grudge. I'm still going to live life the way I want to live. I'm still going to do whatever I want to do and not forsake the, the, the assembly or, 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 or forsake continually the purpose and the promises of God. David in this moment was trying to get us to understand that those that do best by today are already the ones thinking about their tomorrow. Those that consider the moments. Because this is why I want to hear in this moment. Bring that first scripture back up. Why am I spending time? Why am I saying this? Why? I'm answering this question, why? It says, so teach us to minimize our days. When Moses understood this, this is, I mean, this is a psalm of day, but this Moses in this moment, he understood the frailty of our future, right? It made him ask God for wisdom to understand the briefness of life. Look what am I saying? The goal here isn't to cause you to live thinking about dying but for you to not die and never thought about living. Come on, go and say, man, if I just think about dying, I'm going to do right. No, I don't want you to die and never thought about living your life to the fullest. So the key word here is teach us. Somebody shout, teach us. So the reason why Moses in this moment said this is because he realized that numbering our days wasn't automatic. It means, so teach us means that this wisdom must be learned. It's not natural, automatic, or instinctive. It's not something that we do naturally. Number our days because most of the time we're carelessly living. You know, wasting our lives away. Many people are. I know that we're in church today, but you got family, you got people, you got no, you know people that do this all the time. Maybe you may be sitting here and still waste the moment. You already know God called you or purposed you a long time ago, and you're still sitting on his purpose for your life. Waiting for something to happen, waiting to get right. And God said, all you got to do is pursue me, and I'll make you perfect along the way. 
So many times the enemy will convince us that we ain't got it together yet, that we, have, we, are, we haven't lined it up all right, that all the elements are not flowing in our favor. God said, that's not what I'm looking for you. I need for you to make every day count. Every day you waste is an opportunity that you miss to fulfill what I put in you to do. And so most people live a very and very little awareness that life is short and that their days are numbered, especially those that are around us a lot of times. The text indicate the need for God to reveal our days. It reveals to us that, God, I need for you to make sure that I don't waste my day. Oh. This is why God has to be priority. Because if my day were left up to me, I may not maximize it. But every time I do something, that's why people say, Pastor, I see you doing this. I, saw, I see you doing that. I say, but everything that I do, I'm putting God first in it. Because I, I can't imagine what my life will be without God leading it. Because I have to learn on a daily basis. We all have to learn. That's why Moses was saying, Lord, teach me how to do it. Because if you don't teach me, I may not learn. Mama can't teach you sometimes. Daddy, matter of fact, life sometimes. But God has to be the one that says, your days count. My purpose is in you, and so I need you to pursue the things of God. Because most people are concerning themselves with years. That's why they celebrate. But God said, you need to celebrate every day your life is above earth. Amen to that, somebody. Every day you wake up, you need to look yourself in the mirror and say, there you go, your fine self. I don't care how round you are. You declare yourself bad. You are, amen. You can you got to look at yourself and say, I am proud of you. I am grateful to be a part of your life and begin to invite God in your day and say, God, I don't know what this day may bring, but what I know is that I'm bringing you along with me. Every step I take, every move I make, I won't make it without you beside me. He's trying to get us to understand something, y'all, that this requires complete harmony with God. I'm out of time. Jesus. I can't ever get through this stuff. God commands us to consider our days. He said every day you wake up, you got to, to make sure that day is a day of celebration. Man, I mean, if this season haven't taught you something, as we look around the world and we see death tolls every day, you know, people get in, I've been messing with my wife because I, I drive progressively. I'm a progressive driver. And I be and, and my wife, I'll be driving, and, 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 and now she drives a little bit crazier than me, but I just sit over there and don't say nothing. But every time I drive, she got to be talking. She be like, what you, what you do? I'm like, what you drunken for? Like, I'm just, I'm just hitting, I'm hitting corners, like, and she be moving. I said, just pass this to your phone. You, I got this. You can't drive with me. And she be trying to tell me. And, I, and so I, I, I say, you afraid to die? I said, is that what you're trying to control? And she said, but I, I ain't afraid, but not today. I, I don't want to die. I say, I'm not going to kill you. I'm not going to kill myself on purpose. So there be a peace. You can't control what somebody else going to do up there. Don't let yourself worry about that. I got this and God got us. Oh, y'all will hear this in a second. I'm on my way to church. <laughs> I said, I, say, I, I, I pray that God is with us today. He, he, I said, stop being afraid. Of, you can't control whether or not somebody's going to just jump out of nowhere up there. I said, but we're with God right now. And whatever's going to happen. I said, I said, so, so, I said just calm down. Be at peace. And God's going to get us where he wants us to be. And I'm sharing that in your life because a lot of times we're trying to control everything. And God said, all you got to do is be concerned about where I'm at in your life. How I put We try to, man, I'm telling you, I ain't going to ask you to raise your hand because I know there's some control freaks in here. They try to control everything in your life, every circumstance in your life. But you can't control 
Jesus said, make sure that God is in control. Amen. And I'm telling you, you'll find yourself much more peaceful in life. You'll find out, man, that this time I spend with God and my, and my family and my wife, I said, baby, you, why you don't fear nothing? I said, because I know who I'm faithful to. I have zero. I can't even think of something that scares me. I, feel, I ain't talking about just things. I'm talking about life itself. In this season of life, I probably dealt with some of the most hardships that most folks would have probably just gave up. But I know who I was walking with. I know who I was in harmony with. And so I stopped worrying about what the future holds. I started making every day count. I started learning to maximize moments with my family. I mean, I, intentionally when I get home, I say, I ain't going to walk and go to my bedroom and go to every child room and say, hey, how you doing? Maximizing, making those days count. What's up? What's going on today? How you doing? What happened today? Going, making my round versus saying, you know what? I'm just going to go about my business because I, I got to make sure every day is right. And these are things that I'm going to talk about over the next several weeks is how we implement when we are seeking God and how he's priority in our life, how everything else begin to line itself up as it relates to its importance and its priority in our life. You'll start being sensitive to the things you've never been sensitive before. You'll be so aware because when you're not numbering your days, the way the Bible says, you, that means that you are unaware. You're walking in an unawareness of the time. That means that you're almost a, a, like a sleepwalking spiritually. Just kind of dragging along life like, okay, if it meant to happen, it'll happen. And God said, that's not how I meant for you to live. And so I'm going to share, how, how, I just had to get through this moment to really emphasize why we need God as priority, why it's important, because he's trying to teach us to number our days. And Luke, Jesus shared this point, and I'm going to let you go in this moment because I want to leave you right here in this thought. He was talking in Luke chapter 12 about this man who had all this stuff, this rich man, who only wanted to eat, drink, and be merry and had no time or thought for God. This rich man believed he had years to enjoy his stuff. All the pleasures he had set up for himself. But God required his soul that night. He was planning to do a whole lot of stuff, but did not include God in his plans. And Luke, I want to share this because this is what I'm going to start off on next week. In chapter 12, verses 19 through 21, it says here, after this Jesus talking in this parable, he says, and I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself. This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves but is not rich towards God. Let me tell y'all a true story. I retired a little while ago from work life. I don't do ministry for the money. And what I was sharing even with the leaders that between me and my wife, I could probably leave right now and go buy a house in the Bahamas and just chill out there for the rest of my life with the checks and investments I got coming in. I could do that and wake up every day and realize how much life I'm wasting. Get before God and realize that Yes, you did what made you happy, or you thought would have. Now, I'm, I'm not saying I want to do that. I, I, I'm just saying that it's capable. And I read this text, and it made me think about it even more, that some of us got stuff stored up, that we got enough stuff that we could just lay out. We could say, okay, God, I ain't got to go to church no more. I ain't got to serve no more. I ain't got to do nothing no more. I got enough stuff 
to sit back. Because some of us don't retire twice, two or three times. But about you don't retire how many? Three? Two, three times? Three. Two times. You ain't got to go to work. <laughs> Amen. Living good. Ain't you looking for a job. Nope. But you in church. Amen. I'm trying to make a point here. Some of people be like, I got it, and I'm good. But God said at any given moment, he could demand your life. And matter of fact, somebody else is going to spend your stuff the way you wouldn't have spent it. Amen. You don't live right, your kid's going to spend all your money in one day. <laughs> you have spent your life building out, they're going to blow it all. Sell your house that you were having. Sell your car. You can't do nothing about it. I'm sharing this to say as I go into next week. That's why it says number your days because Jesus even shared in this moment that we got to make everything count. He says in verse 21, I'm going to read that one more time because this is going to bring so much light to you. It says this is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves but is not rich towards God. This man had a lot of time and spent a lot of time doing stuff for himself but not doing things for God. And I like to encourage people in every moment in life, if you ever going to set your life in priority, set your, prioritize your life and set priorities for your life, you got to make sure that everything you're storing up is not just for self-gratification but it's for the glory of God. You know, everything I do, every business, every ministry idea, every person, I always have the kingdom of God on my mind. Because that's how I have a guarantee it's going to work. Or at least it's going to come out because you can have stuff. And y'all know this, but don't let stuff have you. Don't let the stuff in your life overwhelm you and consume you. you your job every day, your duty is to do the work of the Lord for your life. And the only way you're going to do his will, you got to be walking with him. Amen. And I want to encourage you as we move into this next season of prioritizing to keep God first. Make sure he is priority in everything. Stay in harmony with him. Stay in connection with him. And watch him cause your life to be greater than it's ever been. I believe it. I know it to be true. When I tell you I believe that this 2022 year is going to be the most prosperous I mean, I'm talking about in health and wealth year that this life and ministry has ever seen. And that's why God has me doing this right now. Because when the blessings come, my pastor spoke a word in my life this week that blew my mind. And I'm going to share it later, but, I, but it, 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 I'm like, God, are you sure that's for me? And when I said that, he said something Right when I was thinking it, he says, and the only thing that would get in your way from receiving what I just said is you doubting God would do it for you. And right then I got convicted. I'm like, oh, Lord, that was right there my moment. Because sometimes I think I ain't worth, like, how you, you going you gonna, to you gonna cause all that to come to my life? He said, that's why I'm teaching you how to prioritize right now. Teaching you how to number your days today. So that when that day comes, you won't lose track of what's going on. And I'm serious, y'all. This is I'm telling you, businesses, your personal life, if you prioritize properly, you're gonna prosper in every area of your life. Your family will be closer, your relationships will be better. You won't have friends you got to watch. Amen. I ain't got nobody around me I got to be paying attention to. Like, what are they going to do? I done prioritized my life. Done done it. And I can tell you it works. Building relationships and having those, man, those moments, man, that you ain't worried. Because you got God as the forefront. And you asking him, every, matter of fact, try this this year. Every relationship you're going to, run it by God first. Just because you're cool don't mean y'all got to connect. Amen. 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 Try it. Say, God, is this really for me? I, I, I say trust that good, that feeling in your stomach that you get. He may be fine, she may be tight, but she may not be right. Amen. Amen. They, I'm just going to tell you the truth. Amen. 
you say, God, is that for me? If you meet, I, I tell a lady, like, if you meet a guy and you say, hey, you go to church, well, I don't do that church thing. You already know. It ain't going to work. Stop right there. You say, okay, I'll move on. Then you, but then you, the, the devil convinced, well, I could change him. No, he, he ain't met me yet. Another one bites the dust. <laughs> I've seen it happen so many times. Hey, Amen. I told my daughter, she, she used to be at college, the guy be like, hey, I, you cute. You go to church? I'm bound to. All right. That's the first step. I ain't, I ain't saying just because you come to church that you're going to be right. That's not what I'm saying. That's just the first start. You should be consistent with your relationship with God. Amen, ladies. And fellas, you should, hey, she got to be consistent with her relationship with God. Amen. Amen. If they love God right, they'll treat you right. Amen. Amen. You'll see what I'm going to get into family later. When God is priority, and, 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 and I'm telling you, if you, God could be priority one day, and if you don't know my days right, he won't be the next. Because just as fast as you get on, you can get all, you'll be like, man, God, I fell I'm trying to keep you to be consistent, ladies and gentlemen, that we stay consistently walking with God. Amen? Let's get up.